Okay, welcome everybody to yet another Smugglers of Cygnus Alpha Patch stream. So as you know, we're doing these streams pretty much every time that we come up with a new patch. Just gives us a chance to touch base with everybody. You know, you get to find out how we're doing, we find out how you're doing, we go over the new features, we give you ideas of where we're going to go next. This particular one, patch 3, this is a big one because we had the number one most voted for, most requested thing to work on next was handling. When we migrated from Unreal Engine to Godot 4, the handling I put in place was rudimentary. Just a very simple hack, essentially. Just enough to get it working so that it could be played and demoed and, and people could actually, you know, get out there and, and see how the game was going while we were working on it. What I have now done is I have ported effectively the handling that we had on Unreal Engine over to Godot. Now, it's not exactly the handling we had on Unreal Engine. There were a number of hacks that were in place on Unreal, and those hacks simply aren't required with Godot. It has a much different physics engine. It's not using PhysX, it's using just the Godot default engine, and it works, honestly, a lot better for the kind of thing that we're doing here. So, I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to show you how the handling is different. I'm going to show you how the handling works. And, you know, if you have any questions, we'll go over them. And then we're going to talk very briefly about what's coming next. Because, obviously, you know, a project like this, there's always something coming next. So, here we go. So, the first thing that changed was the ship shop. Now, in order for the new handling to work, the ship shop had to work because a lot of things went into the handling. Because we're now using physics-based handling rather than just simply a go-forward handling. I had to get the cargo working, I had to get all the little bits working and everything. So, let's go ahead and take a look at how this all works now. One of the things you'll notice is as we uh, as we go through and we look, you'll notice that the max cargo is a multiple of the engine power. So the Spectre, for example, has a max cargo of 1600. We can just call them kilos, but 1600 units. And the El Toro has 8000 units as a default, because this, of course, is this is a, you know, an actual heavy hauler and not a, uh, you know, just a cruise ship, right? This is this is a ship that you're supposed to actually move a bunch of stuff with. So we'll go ahead and we'll start with the rudimentary and I'll show you how the different ships handle and you know how the handling has changed. So first off, let's go ahead and do the, the El Toro without wings and just it's basic. Okay. So we have still the, the choice of two different cons. You know, just like before you've got you've got a couple different views that you can look at this thing from. So you've got this one right here which has you know, minimal obstructions, just that big open sky kind of feel. And then you've got this one right here, which has the, uh, you know, the little A pillars and whatnot. And there's a difference in the amount of crew on these. This one has a single seat in the front and then two in the back, like a McLaren F1 would have. And this one has side-by-side -side seating and will eventually have two positions in the back for additional stations for things. Well, we'll get there when we get there. That's that's going to be exciting, and that's coming soon. Okay. I do not yet have the graphic working properly for the double engine, but the double engine does work effectively, as you can see. It changes our, our power up to 6 Gs from 4 Gs. And you'll notice that our cargo capacity goes up significantly, right? With only 4 Gs, we've got a cargo capacity of 8,000, but with 6 Gs, we've got a cargo capacity of 12,000. So the engine now actually makes a difference. Unfortunately, like I said, I haven't changed the graphic for it yet. That's that's coming. Paint still works the way that it always has, which is to say, you know, you just you can pick the different paints that you like, go with whichever one you want. This will eventually give you the chance to paint things in far more detail and add decals and such, but for the moment, we're just going with some basics. So for this stream, why don't we go with the blue one? I just happen to like this one. Right now, there's still only one bridge per, so we can just skip that one. Okay. So, we're pretty much all set. Let's go ahead and give it the smaller engine, as we've got here, and the small con. And we'll see how it goes. The 
the controls, as before, are on the left here. That'll sit there for 30 seconds. Each time you uh, you change into this view, you'll be able to see the uh, the controls there. And now the first thing you'll probably notice as I move around is that there's a little bit of drift when it turns. So see, it doesn't just simply stop the instant it stops getting input. I assure you I'm nowhere near that smooth at, at controlling it. And that's because you're actually turning with physics now. And it's got the same exact, you know, six degrees of freedom that it always had. You can flip over completely. You can you can turn from any angle. This is not your your uh, uh, you know fighter jet in space kind of sim. We're actually doing the best we can to do to do a fair job of it. You know you can do full rolls. You can do all the different stuff that you'd like to do. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go ahead and we're going to move around a little bit without any cargo capacity used. Just we're just going to go ahead and we're going to floor it and we're going to start flying and let you guys see how it goes. So the first and most obvious demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and bring down the throttle and you'll see that we don't actually slow down significantly right away. It just kind of keeps drifting, but we're using a little bit less fuel, right? This is a fairly physics accurate sim. I mean, it's not perfect. I do have it actually slow down a bit over time. It's a little arcadey. We're going with the, uh, the, the way that we had done on Unreal. The pure physics was really kind of annoying to people. So, But the other thing is, when we go down to zero, if you go to straight zero, it will cruise to a stop. Which again is also not very, very, you know, true physics-y, but it does make it a lot easier to handle and it's it's more space simmy. So let's go ahead and do some, some maneuvering here real quick. We're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna keep it floored so that we'll have the absolute maximum drift and we're just going to drift in between the rings here. And you'll notice that I can actually basically point the opposite direction and continue gliding around. And unless I go 100% opposite, a full 180, I actually have like a nice effective drift. It doesn't just immediately change as soon as my positioning has changed. So it's got a little bit more space handling, makes it a bit more challenging, a bit more interesting to maneuver. And if you remember to actually bring your throttle down before you do things like turns, you can actually go straight backwards if you like and just continue drifting that way for a while until it actually catches up. And then as you go into negative, into negative throttle below zero, which doesn't actually change the zero any, but think of it as brakes, it will actively slow you down. So that's that's one absolute thing. Now let's go ahead and run into something hard at some speed so you'll see how the actual uh, physics works with hitting something. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to bounce off this module here fairly hard. It's going to kind of careen here. So let's say that I just straight up run into something. And there you go. You see we'll actually like careen around and it'll actually give us some pretty some pretty, you know, nice effects like you'd expect from careening into a heavy object. Okay. So That's how it handles when it's unloaded. So I got that working. Now, let's look at the actual piece to get it, you know, Interesting. Let's get some load in here. Let's go grab a job. And you'll notice first off that this actually is now a green check mark. Now in small jobs, I should be able to take pretty much any small job in a El Toro bare bones. Not 100% of them, but almost all of them. However, if I go to the medium jobs, I'll start seeing jobs that are too big for the El Toro. Some will still be uh, in range, but some will be too big. And then when I get to large jobs, these are all going to be too big for the El Toro Bear, right? Look at the cargo mass these require. These require some much bigger ships, which should give you an interesting hint of what's coming. Much, much bigger ships. You may have seen some of them in all wallpapers if you're a backer. Okay, so let's start by getting a small job. Let's grab one that's within our spec, but, you know, pretty good size. How about... Oh yeah, that one's pretty hefty. Okay, we'll grab this depot-to-depot -depot job. 
that takes us to Alpha 1 Minor. Well, actually, that's a little far that, farther than I want to go. I want to I go someplace fairly close. So let's find something big that goes to the station. There you go. Okay. So that's a pretty hefty job, and it goes to the station, so we don't have to go very far. So we'll take the job from Omega Hall there. Okay, now you'll notice that fully loaded, this ship does not handle Zippy at all. It now handles like it's got, you know, a significant amount of cargo on it. So let's go ahead and accelerate here. And as you can see with our acceleration, it's going to take some time to get up to our full speed. So we are we are pushing this acceleration, but it is it is getting there. And this is where really the difference in mass will come in is you know, full 100% throttle will eventually get you to its top speed. But with a tremendous amount of mass, it's going to take you a lot longer to get there than if you do it at, say, lower throttle. But of course, you can always conserve fuel by bringing it down a little bit, because once you get moving, you know, you're going to stay moving. That's sort of the point. We have not yet added fuel burn rates or any of that kind of stuff. That's coming much, much later. But for now, let's go ahead and deliver this cargo. And let's do a similar exercise with one of the other ships. Now let me check real quick to see if anybody has any comments, since I can't read the chat while I'm in here. Okay. Yes, hello Reef Podcast. Welcome to the stream. I'm sorry that I can't see comments while I'm going, because I've, I've got just one screen. But, welcome, and I'm happy you dropped by. If you have any questions, I'll try to get to them here real quick. Okay, now as soon as we deliver this to that nice little red sphere there, you're going to see that uh, our handling is going to change very drastically as soon as we drop off our cargo load here. And at the moment, one of our missions is overlapping with the uh, the text, so it's a little bit messy. But yeah, these are things that happen in Alpha. So I just pass through the red zone, and I'll be able to deliver my cargo here. Oh, I went around it. Ah, the challenges of maneuvering when there's a lot more mass on board. Piloting does get a little trickier. So here we go. And you know, even at full burn here, I'm I am not moving so great when I'm when I'm fully loaded like this. So let's go ahead and get there we go, delivery completed. We made two thousand credits, and all of a sudden I am zippy and fast again as one would expect. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to back out of this. And we're going to pick a different ship. And we're going to show the different handling characteristics of a different ship build. Let me check real quick and uh, see if there's any comments. Oh good, thank you very much. I'm happy that you're checking it out and I'm, I'm glad that you're enjoying the graphics. Yes, and welcome Jess, I appreciate you dropping by. Yeah, we've worked very hard on, on trying to port uh, what we consider to be Unreal Fidelity graphics to Godot Engine 4. And for the most part, it's been successful. There's a few things I need to learn. There's a few things I need to get better at. But, you know, that's, that's the nature of working it through Alpha. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab a different ship this time. So this time, let's take that same 5,000 pound load, or 5,000 kilo load, or 5,000 unit load, but let's go ahead and grab it with the double engine and we're going to add the little winglets. So this time we're going to have this thing as loaded as possible. So we're going to take the same 5000, but it's going to be based off of a it's going to be based off of a 8G accelerating engine instead. So that you'll be able to see the uh, the handling difference that that makes. So first off, all right, basic handling, still roughly the same. When we put down the hammer, we move noticeably faster, as you can see. We get up to a much higher speed. Let me go ahead and slow down here. Okay. I have not yet animated the winglet engines. That's coming soon, but not done yet. Okay, so let's find something that's got a cargo mass of about 5,000 that we can take. 
Uh, let's see, it's 5,900. And you see we can now carry much larger items. 5,000. That's perfect. And it's going to Alpha 1 Miner. Oh, you're interested in um, Reef Podcast. You're interested in uh, another interview to promote the game. I would love to do another interview. I'm, I'm always happy to talk to you guys. So if you would love to do another pod, another podcast interview, I would love to do another podcast interview. Plus, we've got two books in the Smugglers of Cygnus franchise that we would love to talk about as well. And so we'll be happy to provide you with the, uh, the first book so that you can check it out before that if you are interested. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab this uh, 5,000 mass one, and we'll see how this goes. Okay, so we just picked up a new one. And as you can see, you know, still a little sluggish moving around. That part doesn't really change. But the part that does change is now that we have a much bigger engine, we get moving a lot faster. I mean, not fast, but much faster. I mean, we can actually, like, do, you know, handling tricks and stuff at 8 Gs with the same 5,000 pounds. Now, this, of course, is still going to require some tuning. We're still in alpha, and this is the first sighting of this new engine handling. So, you know, we would love to hear from you guys. Download it. Let us know what you think of the handling. Do you think it should be, you know, a little bit more extreme? Do you think it should be less extreme? All that kind of good stuff. Okay, let me hop out, and then we'll try one of the other ships so you can see completely different handling. So now we're going to grab the Spectre, which is a little bitty guy. And this one, of course, is specifically for interesting missions. You know, fun stuff. I'll get a color that's nice and obvious on stream. Let me check the chat here real quick. Um, October 13th. Um, I have nothing currently on my calendar that far out. <laughs> Since October 13th is like eight months from now. So, yeah, I've got I've got nothing on my um, on my calendar that far out. And welcome, Geek Goggles. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab this little guy. Now, this only has a 1G engine. And a crew of three. And this one is an interesting looking little ship, as you may have noticed if you've uh, come across this one before. And this is a stealth ship that can move small things innocuously. So let's get out there and fly this one around. Okay, so this is a 1G engine. Technically 1.6, but you know. So this is a, a just generally... Oh, I still have my cargo from the previous one, so hang on a second. Let me uh, clear out my cargo here. Let's, uh, let's get a much smaller job that I can actually handle with this one. There we go. Okay, so here's, here's a, uh, a job that we can actually handle with it, because that's only fair to take a job that we can actually handle. And so fully loaded, we have similar performance. We've got our little, our little task thing uh, that pops out. So we can go ahead and, and do our deliveries whenever we like. And let's see, let's grab something that actually uh, delivers to the station so that we can hand it off here quick. And you notice that, you know, relative speed, it travels about the same with 800, gram, 800 kilograms of cargo as the, uh, the El Toro does when it's, you know, also pretty much fully loaded. So the, the speeds should be roughly relative Though there's obviously still going to be some some tweaks to do mass-wise. 
let's go ahead and get this in there. Now we're still aiming for an individual delivery or mission to be able to be completed within about 20 minutes tops. So for until you get to the really complicated stuff. So, you know, we're slowing it down a little bit with actually having the correct physics for things or mostly correct physics for things. But I'm trying to do very quick deliveries here because I want to, uh, you know, not take up too much of people's time with the stream here. So, okay. Delivery completed. Okay. Now, as you can see, this is actually a much zippier craft. When it's out here cruising around. As an unladen swallows, <laughs> an unladen swallows flight, as it were. The ray tracing still looking pretty cool. So you can do some very interesting uh, acrobatics and whatnot with these things, as long as they're not carrying heavy cargo. Once once you're carrying heavy cargo, it gets uh, to be a whole different ball game. Oh uh, no, let's not crash into anything. Okay, so that covers a couple of the major updates in this patch. First of which being that we have the... Uh, the first of which being that we have the ship shopper fixed as well. Okay, so catching up with the chat here. Let's see. Um, let's see the podcast. Oh, you have your own Twitch channel now, so you do it live from Twitch. That's fantastic. And yeah, the date is great, and um, October 13th works fine. Like I said, I got nothing nothing planned for October 13th, so I am I am 100% on board for that. Okay, so now let's get on to one of the other fixes in this patch. Aside from the ship shopper, which is the major one, and the flight handling, which is the other major one. Let's go in here and let's talk to Bart real quick. So we're just going to land, and we're going to talk to Bart. Landing in our convenient landing zone. Okay, and you get the reminder again of what the controls do. And a little message there, welcome to Alpha Station. Now we still, of course, have the, uh, the board that comes up here that you can use to connect and uh, find jobs. We've also got bad luck parts, which you can come in here and, you know, talk to the folks. Hey, it's very good to see you. So we've completed this mission now. We've gone and met bad luck Bart. I'm closed for business right now. And we can see that he's closed at the moment. Well, let me tell you. So we can now go ahead and, and take this mission if we want, or we can ignore this mission and go do something else Thanks later. For stopping by. So we have no current job, and as you can tell, if we have no current job and we have no current quests or missions, you know, we're free as a bird and we can do whatever we like. So let's look around the station a little bit. The quartermaster's office is going to be right back here. This is where you'll be able to change your ships here soon, as well as do some interesting stuff with your loads. And the academy which has so long been an empty door, now has a room behind it that will be accessible in the next patch where you'll be able to uh, at least see the Academy if not actually start the tutorials for flight handling and whatnot. And then once that happens, you know, the sky's the limit and it's going to start getting really interesting. So let's go back in here and we can always pick up this quest again. A big old fight. A real genuine slobber knock. So we can read about this mission that he has, for business right now. you know, needs a little help with. See you when you get back. Thanks for stopping by. So now we have a mission showing up and you can see that missions actually sit there parallel with jobs. So we can have a job and we can have a mission. Because sometimes, you know, a mission is going to take you a while to accomplish, but you might want to carry some cargo on your way there. We can come on out to the cargo bay here. Okay, and now we've got the suspicious debris 
and this suspicious debris is actually the uh, the cargo that we're looking for for Bad Luck Bart. So we can go out here and we can grab this. Now, if we go dig into Bad Luck Bart's salvage mission, mission here, collect the cargo around the station, and then just a uh, a little reiteration of it, and you can see where it's it's going. You can track and untrack it right here. And then when it's completed, it'll go onto the completed mission side of the tab. Right now, you can't open these. These don't these don't dig in. I might be able to add a thing so that you can dig into them later, but right now they don't. So let's collect some of this cargo. We're not going to collect all of it, but we'll collect some of this cargo just so you can see. And we might as well use this as an opportunity to switch to the piloting interior view. So this is the inside of this particular cockpit. This one's a single seater in the front, and then there's two stations in the rear, or there will be. There's room for two stations in the rear so that you can get additional uh, help. Oh, and look at that. We went right past it. And that's life of the physics handling uh, spaceship. Got to be a little bit more careful how you steer. Ah! So one of the things that's coming shortly, but not quite yet, is going to be remappable controls. That was something that unfortunately we couldn't really do with uh, with the prior version on Unreal, but is actually not too difficult with Godot, so I'm hoping to add it here shortly. And as we collect each one of these, you'll be able to actually see a little update letting you know that you collected it and how many you've got left. Let's go grab this one, for example. So as you can see, precision piloting is a little bit harder when we actually have the physics engine stuff turned on than it was with the, uh, the non-physics engine. But space piloting is, you know, that's sort of the name of the game, is that's what people want out of space piloting. They don't want it to be you know, just flying a uh, a jet simulator in space. They want they want actual, you know, slightly more interesting. Not quite Star Citizen level interesting, but slightly more interesting. So you collect a piece of collected a piece of cargo. Four remaining. Okay, and I think we've gotten all the basics that I wanted to cover. That's new stuff. Let me check and see if anybody has any questions, and then we will go ahead and talk about what's coming soon. Oh, man, I'm glad that you hear that your book till 2025. That's fantastic. So for anyone who has not checked out the Reef podcast, they are really cool. And it's one of my favorite gaming podcasts. And you should definitely go uh, go take a look. We've been on there before. Uh, I do still have a Discord account, I think. If not, I'll create a new one by then. But I think I still have one. Uh, if you want to drop a link to it, you can um, drop it here, and if it won't let you, I will uh, try and find your, your link and get it in there. <laughs> Not 100% sure if it, uh, if it allows links in YouTube's uh, stream bit. Okay, so what's coming up next for Smugglers? Let's go ahead and, and head into the uh, the asteroid belt here while we talk about what's coming next. Okay. So, next up on Smugglers, what I'm working on right this minute, I'm working on doing the new trailer, because I would like to do an update from the trailer that we had. The uh, The old trailer is, you know, it's serviceable, but it's it's very dated. It does not really show off a lot of our new stuff as well as I would like to. You know, it doesn't have any of the newer ships. It doesn't have any of the newer abilities or things that you can do. So the plan is to, you know, get it a bit more current. And the other thing is that it's going to be adding more voice work. It's going to be adding a little bit more of the story. And it's going to be adding the academy. So these things are going to be showing up in the trailer here before too long. But in order to get the trailer to work, I have to get all those pieces working 
before the trailer can come out. So the next thing that I'm that I'm focusing on at the moment is basically getting those pieces working. So the next patch will have the academy. The next patch will have a bit more voice work. The next patch will have uh, possibly another ship. And the next patch will have hopefully the start of the the flight tutorial. We will we will see how that goes. I try to I try to keep the list for patches reasonably short so that I can accomplish them in a in a reasonable time frame. You know, so that people aren't waiting like two to three months between patches. You know, I try not to bite off more than I can chew though, you know. I I'm, I'm an indie dev. <laughs> Biting off more than you can chew is kind of kind of the nature of what we do, right? As we as we go out here and fly through the thing. Now I will be at GTC, the graphics technology conference. For anybody who wants to drop me a message there if you're going. I will not be at GDC, the game developer conference, because that one is like almost four thousand dollars and I simply can't afford it. Though I am always willing to uh to talk about interesting stuff if you know something comes up and you want to check it out. Oh, let's visit one of these asteroids while we're here, because these are kind of cool. Now, if you haven't played recently, and you haven't seen the asteroids, you may not know that we actually have these fairly detailed, and you can straight up run into them now. They are, for the most part, actual physics objects. And some of these asteroids have interesting and nifty little secrets on them. Like little smugglers' dens and cool stuff like that. That will come in handy later, as there, as there are more asteroids in this, uh, in this solar system out here than there are planets. There will be asteroids that can be mined. There will be asteroids that can be landed on. All kinds of stuff. Yeah, as you can see, these are, these are fairly detailed, and you can indeed collide into them. So they can present a bit of a hazard to navigation if, if you know, you so choose. And some of them will actually, you know, have things like pirates on them. You never know. Okay, let me just go ahead and flip this over to a a nice, you know, pretty screenshot kind of view here. And check and see uh, what comments anyone has, and then we'll wrap up. Welcome, Wilram. Happy to see you drop by. Okay, so we've covered all the major stuff. If anyone has, you know, any uh, questions or comments or anything that you'd like to see specifically, uh, we can go ahead and take a look at that. And otherwise, I think we'll wrap it for this patch. As always, uh, you can drop your feedback at the links in the uh, video description. And I will also drop the... Um, let's see... I will also drop the links to our Patreon here, where for a dollar a month or more, you can actually get access to the uh, the book as it comes out, one chapter at a time, votes, all that kind of good stuff. And then here on the forum, you can take a look and see what the current progress is and how things are coming. And then here is the current patch. You can check out all the current patch notes and everything that's going on. Oh, good. I'm glad that you like the look of the flight physics for him. Uh, I'm not sure if you got a chance to see uh, loaded versus unloaded, but yeah, it makes quite a difference. The next uh, big update... Oh, I should mention this. The next big update will actually be switching to a higher precision physics engine. We'll be switching from 32-bit physics engine to a 64-bit physics engine which will give us greater precision when we're a long ways from the base. I'm not sure if you can tell the little bit of a wobble that's going on right here. There's like a tiny, tiny bit of jitter on the ship. And that's merely because we are so far away from the, uh, the zero point, which is back there where the station is. And that should be fixed in uh, that portion. And we'll also be switching the distribution method from a single executable to an executable plus a compressed package which also requires us to recompile. So that'll be the, uh, the, the biggest changes that aren't the Academy and things like that. 
will be changes to the actual uh, uh, Godot level that we're using, and the uh, the fact that we'll be switching to a a custom world version of it that has those additional features turned on. Okay, that I think is uh, covers everything. So thank you everyone so very very much for being here. You are awesome, and you are very appreciated. And I can't wait to talk to you again when we have our next uh, our next update. So thank you so very much, and I will see you then.